Welcome back. As you gather with family and friends in the coming days, consider having a little fun and not talk about our current politics, but more recent history. Wonky fun, if you will, with a conversation about alternative history. What if JFK had lived? What if Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton had not gotten married? What if Antonin Scalia had not died in early 2016? We love these kinds of conversations so much, we've created a special series in my podcast feed, the Chuck Todd Cast, to discuss them. We're calling it Meet the Alternative History. You can listen to the first episode on what if Bill Clinton had resigned amid the Monica Lewinsky scandal in 1998 and where we'd be now. I explore that scenario with longtime political journalist and analyst Jeff Greenfield. He's written books on scenarios like this. He's a five-time Emmy-winning network journalist and now a columnist for Politico. He joins me now. So, Jeff, you know, military planners war game scenarios all the time. And in some ways, alternative histories, I guess, are, are the way journalists and historians sort of war game things. But you have written some alternative history. And as a historian and political analyst, why, why do you uh, do it? And why isn't, why isn't it just simply fiction? in your mind? If you do it right, it teaches you two things. One, the incredibly contingent nature of history. Over and over again, tiny changes would have resulted in enormous consequences. If it hadn't stopped raining in Dallas, that bubble top would have stayed on John Kennedy's limousine. If Elian Gonzalez's mother had survived, there wouldn't have been a uh, custody controversy that probably cost Al Gore 15 or 20,000 votes in a state he lost by 500. And the second thing it teaches you is how critical character and temperament is. You, put this, you put, take the same conditions and put a different person in, and you get a different result. Uh, if Lyndon Johnson was in charge of the Cuban Missile Crisis, because John Kennedy almost was killed before he ever got to be president, with his values, with his understanding, with his trust in the military, you might have had a totally different outcome. So apart from being kind of fun, I think it teaches yeah. a, lot of, uh, a lot of stuff about history. You know, you brought up just one scenario in 2000. We were joking in here, and, and, and we, I'm going to hopefully use the term correctly. There's a kaleidoscope of butterfly effects on 2000. There are about 20 or 30 different butterflies that flapped its wings that if just one of them hadn't, right? You've got the Buchanan ballot font size, the butterfly ballot, you know, a Secretary of State's race. There's all sorts on that one. But let's work the Bill Clinton scenario because, my goodness, the first question I think people have asked me is, does 9-11 happen? Again, in my view, despite uh, President Al Gore's enormous efforts to stop it, because he was very hawkish about al-Qaeda, um, he'd been there for eight years as vice president. Um, I talked to Richard Clark about this for the ebook I wrote about the, the a possible Gore presidency. And I think the conclusion is, well, he would have done everything possible to stop it too many of the elements were in place to completely stop it, which leads to a second uh, conclusion that because he'd been there for eight years, there might have been a lot more political criticism of a President Gore than there was of President George W. Bush after 9-11. And then it sets up a whole bunch of other things. Does George W. Bush even run for president in 2000 against a sitting President Gore? Uh my feeling is at that point, the, the uh, collective Republican establishment, which still actually picked presidents back then, unlike <laughs> now, uh, probably still would have found a, a, a Texas governor with appeal to Hispanics, uh, a, a credible uh, uh, candidate. Um, but the other part about that is, you know, without Bill Clinton's hovering over the 2000 campaign, right. How do you run a campaign where your principal theme, as George W. Bush's was, was I will restore honesty and integrity to the White House? Does that work with a President Gore as opposed to an outgoing President Clinton? All right. By the way, our scenario, I think you and I both agree, Al Gore doesn't go to Iraq. All right. Barack Obama arguably became the nominee of the Democratic Party and president of the United States because he was one of the few that stood up to Republicans early on and said, boy, Iraq's a mistake. If he doesn't have that moment, do we have Barack, President Barack Obama? Well, given his age, we might have a Barack Obama in 2024. Uh, he's right. a, he was a, a, you know, an outsized political talent. But the point you're making, and it's really critical, I think, if you do alternate history right, is you have to play out all the contingencies. You, you can't just say, well, we'll put this person in place of this person. For instance, would John Kennedy, had he lived, uh, gotten out of Vietnam? And people say, well, look what happened in 65. There was a, right. uh, an attack on the Marines. 
Kennedy would have had 14 months to try to figure out some way to de-escalate Vietnam, uh, which he was very much inclined to do, I believe. So yeah. your point is very well taken. You can play everyone out. Would Hillary Clinton never have gotten right. into politics? Uh, yeah. is, a, is a good example. Would John McCain may have, there, you know, by the way, Al Gore could not have run in 2020, in, in uh, 2000, 2000. Probably not. There might have been a constitutional question about that. That would have been fun as yeah. well. Anyway, I'm yeah. up against a hard break. As a former network guy, you get this. Jeff Greenfield, it's a pleasure to partner with you on this. You'll have a lot of fun. Catch more of Jeff and I's conversations about uh, some of these what-ifs in a new special series on the Chuck Toddcast. Get it wherever you get your podcasts.